In this video, we're going to be looking at the coordinate geometry of a circle. Now, a circle is a very, very familiar geometric object. It's got many, many properties, and you can explore these through Euclidean geometry. However, for certain aspects of the geometry of a circle, we need to look at it through coordinate geometry. We need to be able to recognize the equation of a circle when we see it, and from that equation, we need to be able to derive certain information, such as the center and the radius of the circle. We're also interested in lines meeting the circle, either as chords or as tangents. So, let's begin by having a look at a circle that's got a radius of 5 and centered on the origin. So there's the origin. And here's my circle of radius 5 units. So if it's of radius 5 units, it's going to cut the axes 5 units away from O. Because every point on this circle is 5 units away from O. So let's have a look at a point P, whose coordinates are x and y. And we'll join P with a radius, OP, to the origin, and that's a 5 units there. Let's drop the perpendicular, and we'll call that N, down to the x-axis, and a right angle there. So this distance ON is the x-coordinate, so let's label it x, and this distance here Pn is the y-coordinate, so let's label it y. This is now a right-angle triangle, OPN, and in a right-angle triangle, we know that Pythagoras works. So we can write down that x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. And so x squared plus y squared equals 25. And this relationship is true for every point on the circle. Let's have a look over here. Say, let's take another point Q. Let's say its coordinates are x1, y1. And again, if we drop our perpendicular down to this point, let's call it n1, then we can see that this is again x1, the length of it will be x1, or the modulus of x1, at the very least, the size. And the length of this is equivalent to y1. So again, we've got Pythagoras. And this is again 5. And we're going to end up with this relationship here. So what's this in a more general case? Well, let's look first of all at a circle, again centered on the origin. And this time, let's say it's of radius r. So again, it will cut the axes at a distance r away from the origin, its center. We take a point p on the circle, coordinates x, y. And this is a radius of the circle, and so it will be of length r. And we'll drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis, and we'll call that the point n. Again, on is equal to x, and pn is equal to y. This right-angled triangle, and so within that right-angled triangle, Pythagoras works, and so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And so that's the equation of a circle centered on the origin of radius r. But what about a circle that isn't centered at the origin? Well, let's have a look at that case. So again, we'll draw a circle. And this time, we'll say it's got coordinates a and b. So let's put some axes in that might be anywhere. Let's have them there, like 
x-axis and our y-axis. And we'll take a point P on the circle, and its coordinates will be x, y. Now, this is a circle of radius r again. Let's call that the center C, and that's radius r. Now, in the same way that we had a right-angled triangle, it would be good for us to generate a second right-angled triangle here. And we can do that by drawing in the horizontal through C that's parallel to the x-axis and dropping a perpendicular down from P to give us a right angle there and call that point N. Now, we've got our right angle triangle. We know that the hypotenuses of length are, so what are the lengths of these sides? Let's just write them down. C N equals, well, N has an X coordinate of X. C has an X coordinate of A. And so this distance CN, that's this distance here, is just X minus A. So CN is X minus A. What about PN? Well, again, P has a Y coordinate of Y, and C has a Y coordinate of of B. So this distance here must be Y minus B. And so PN is Y minus B. So now we know the two shorter sides of the right angle triangle, and we know from Pythagoras that the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. In other words, C n squared plus p n squared is equal to c p squared. And we know all of these things, so let's write them down. This is x minus a, all squared, plus y minus b, all squared, equals c p squared, and that's just the radius, so that's r squared. And what we usually do then is to multiply out these brackets. Now, this is x minus a all squared. So it will be x squared minus 2xa plus a squared plus, and then this will expand in a very similar way, y squared minus 2by plus b squared equals r squared. Now, we gather together the terms, so x squared plus y squared, we'll put at the front, minus 2, and I'm going to write it as ax minus 2by, and then plus a squared plus b squared, and I'm going to take r squared away from each side to give me equal 0. Now, this looks a fairly complicated equation. So one of the things we're going to do is to use some slightly different constants to get what we call the standard equation of a circle. So I'm going to replace the minus a by the letter g. And I'm going to replace the minus b by the letter f. So we have x squared plus y squared minus... 2ax minus 2by plus a squared plus b squared minus r squared equals naught. And so to make it like the standard form that we see in textbooks, it's x squared plus y squared. Now I said I'm going to replace minus a by g. So I get 2gx. I said I would replace minus b by f, so I get plus 2fy. If I continue with that replacement, then instead of a squared, I must have g squared, because minus a all squared is a squared, plus f squared minus 
r squared equals naught. And then finally, this bit at the end, well, it's just a number, isn't it? And so because it's just a number, we represent it by a symbol or letter for something that's just a number, a constant, so we call it plus c equals naught. This is the standard equation of a circle. Some things to notice about this equation. First of all, the coefficients of x squared and y squared are equal. That's always a good clue when looking at an equation and trying to determine if it is the equation of a circle. Secondly, there are no x, y terms. And if we look back at what we had here, x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared, there was never any possibility that we were going to be multiplying these two brackets together. So there was never any possibility we were going to multiply x and y terms together. And therefore, we should expect as has happened, that there are no x, y terms in this equation. So, this is the equation of a circle. It's got terms in x squared and y squared, and the coefficients of x squared and y squared are equal. And there is no x, y term. It's also an equation of second degree, because it's got square terms in it. What else can we read from this equation? Well, let's remember that we started off with the centre at the point A, B. And that here, I replaced minus A by G. So I can say, therefore, that the centre of the equation, as I look at this, is minus G... Remember, the centre was A, B, and I've replaced minus A by G, so A is equal to minus G. And similarly, minus F. What's the radius? Well, you need to play about a little bit with this. This expression here was what C was equal to. G squared plus F squared minus r squared. So if I rearrange that and bring r squared over there by adding an r squared to both sides, and then I take c away, that's my expression for r squared. And so r is just the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So that's the standard equation of a circle. And that's how we read it to get the centre, and that's how we can read it to get the radius. Now, let's look at one or two examples. Let's take this. x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y minus 12 equals 0. First of all, is it a circle? Well, yes, the coefficients of x squared and y squared are equal. There's no x, y term anywhere there, and this is of degree 2. So, let's compare it with our standard equation of a circle, which was x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. And we can see from that 2g minus 6, so 2g is the same as minus 6, so g is equal to minus 3. And we can see by comparing 2fy, 4y, 2f is the same as 4, and so f is equal to 2. And minus 12 is equal to c. So we can read off the centre... Remember, the centre was minus g minus f. So in this case, it's 3, because it's minus minus 3. And minus f, so it's minus 2. And we can calculate the radius, because the radius was g squared plus f squared minus c. 
and we know all of these, so g squared is 9, f squared is 4, and minus c is minus minus 12, so that's plus 12. And if we top these up, that's 9 and 4 is 13, and 12 is 25, square root of 25, so that's 5. So we've interpreted our equation. We know it's a circle. x squared and y squared terms equal. No term in x, y, and its second degree. We know its center, 3 minus 2, and we know its radius, 5. There is another way of looking at this. Sometimes people have trouble remembering formulae and like to be able to work perhaps in a more natural way. So let's have a look at this equation again. Just flatten that down. x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y minus 12 equals 0. And let's just think where the x squared and the minus 6x might have come from. Well, if you remember, if we look back when we did this equation here, we got the x term and the x squared term out of multiplying out a complete square, x minus a, all squared. So if we look back at the example that we've got, could we get that back by completing the square for x squared minus 6x? So let's get those together, x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 4y. And remember, this arose in a very similar way. So we're going to have to do something quite similar with that one. Minus 12 equals 0. So let's complete the square here. Well, that must have come from expanding a bracket x minus 3 all squared. Because that would give us the x squared, and the minus 3 times x, and then x times minus 3 would give us the minus 6x. There's an additional term, minus 3 plus times by minus 3 gives us plus 9. So I've got to take 9 away to keep that block identical to that block. Plus, let's complete the square here, y plus 2 all squared. Because if it wasn't y plus 2, how else would I get the plus 4y? But here again, when I multiply this out, I've got plus 2 times y plus 2 is plus 4. So I've got 4 too many that I must take away in order to keep this block the same as that block. And then minus 12 equals 0. So x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared equals, now take away 9, take away 4, and take away 12 is the same as taking away 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. Now I can see laid out before me exactly where this equation came from. Because here, if we look back at the original equation that we had, x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared. x minus 3 all squared, so that tells us that the center is equal for the x coordinate, a equals 3. y minus b all squared, so that tells us that b was minus 2 for the y coordinate of the center. And clearly, r is equal to 5. So the center is 3 minus 2. So we've done the same question in two different ways. One relies upon us making use of the standard equation and interpreting that equation to get the center and the radius. And the other one requires us to complete the square. Let's have a look at a second example, and again, we'll take both of those. 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 8x minus 7y 
equals zero. Moments panic here. Um, there is no xy term. This is an equation of degree 2, because we've got x squared and y squared and no higher terms. But we've got 2s in front of the x squared and the y squared. We've only ever had x squared and y squared before. But they are the same. They are the same coefficients. So it's the same term in x squared and the same term in y squared. So if I divide throughout by 2, I will have x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 7 over 2y equals 0. And now it does look like a circle. And now we can clearly see it's a circle. The fact that there is no constant term here doesn't worry us. So, let's compare this with the standard equation of a circle. Minus 4 is the same as 2g, so g must be equal to minus 2. 2f is the same as minus 7 over 2, so f must be minus 7 over 4. And there is no constant term, that just means c is equal to 0. So the centre of our circle is minus g minus f. So in this case, it's 2, because it's minus 2 for g. Minus minus 2 gives us 2. And the same for f, minus minus 7 over 4 is plus 7 over 4. The radius, well, we know the radius is g squared plus f squared minus c. So in this case, it's g squared, that's just 4, plus, and we square this, we get 49 over 16. Now we put all this over a common denominator, so the common denominator is 16, so we've got 64 sixteenths plus 49 sixteenths, that's 113 over 16, and we might just choose to write that as 1 quarter square root of 113. So just because we got a nice equation at the beginning doesn't necessarily mean we'll get some nice answers at the end. Remember, circles can have any radius that is possible, any real number. So that's not something that should worry us enormously. Let's have a look at doing this the other way. So again, let's begin with our 2x squared that down, plus 2y squared minus 8x minus 7y equals 0. Again, we need to divide throughout by 2. x squared, and I'm going to take the x's together, so that will be minus 4x plus y squared minus 7 over 2y equals 0. Now we need to complete the square here. And the way that I get minus 2x is by having x minus 2 all squared. But when I multiply out those brackets, I'll get a plus 4. And that will be too many. So I need to take 4 off to keep that lump of algebra the same as that lump. Plus y minus, and here that's got to be 7 over 4, all squared. And when I multiply out the bracket, I'll have 49 over 16, 7 over 4 times by 7 over 4, too much. So I must deduct that 49 over 16 equals 0. So I've got x minus 2, all squared plus y minus 7 over 4, all squared, is equal to... Now, I'm taking 4 away and taking 49 over 16 away, so I'm going to add those two to both sides. 4 plus 49 over 16, and if we put this all over 16, this is 113 over 16. So, altogether, 
x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 7 over 4 all squared is equal to 113 over 16. And that's my equation of the circle, so I can see from that that the centre will be x minus a, well a is clearly 2, y minus b, so b is clearly 7 over 4, is equal to, and this here is r squared, so I take the square root, 1 quarter the square root of 113. And those are exactly the same answers that we got before. Let's just take one more example. And I'm only going to do this by referring to the standard equation. So with x squared plus y squared plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. So let's just check, is it a circle? Well, certainly the coefficients of x squared and y squared are the same. They're both 1. There is no xy term, and it's of degree 2. So, yes, it's a circle, but there doesn't seem to be a y term here. It's missing. Should that worry us? Well, let's write down the standard equation. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. And let's make the comparison. So, 8 is the same as 2g. So g has got to be equal to 4. Now, there is no y term, and that can only mean that f is equal to 0, and c is equal to 7. So my center is minus g minus f, which gives us minus 4, 0. The radius we can calculate as the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c equals, let's substitute in what we've got. This is 4 fourths are 16 for g squared. f squared is 0. And c is 7, so we're taking 7 away. So 16 minus 7 gives us 9, and we want the square root of that, which is 3. So this is a circle whose centre is minus 4, 0, and it's got a radius of 3. Now, having got used to handling the equation of a circle, one of the things that we're interested in is how do lines intersect with circles. And of course, the one that we might be most interested in is a tangent. So, going to have a look at an example we're going to have a look at an example where the circle has an equation x squared plus y squared plus 2x plus 4y minus 3 equals 0. And we're going to ask, what's the tangent to that circle at the point on the circle 1 minus Four. What's the equation of the tangent to that circle at this point, which is on the circle? And if we just check that, put x equals 1 in there, that's 1 squared is 1. y is minus 4, so that's 4 fours are 16, that's 17 altogether. 2 times by 1 is 2, that's 19. And then we 4 times by minus 4. That's minus 16, so 19 minus 16 is 3, and then take away the 3, that's 0. So this point is definitely on that circle. So let's draw our circle, and there's its centre. Now, this is where what we did before is helpful. Where is that point? Well, if we look at our equation, what's g? Well, we know that the standard equation says that it's 2gx, and this is just 2x, so we know that g is 1, and f, well, the standard equation is 2fy, so f must be 2. And so, therefore, our centre is 
minus g minus f minus 1 minus 2. So we know that this point is minus 1 minus 2, the centre of the circle. And somewhere over here is the point on the circle, the point 1, 4. So our axes are going to be somewhere sorry, 1 minus 4, that point was on the circle, are going to be somewhere there. OK, what's the equation of the tangent? Now, the tangent is the line that just touches the circle at that point. Just touches it. We need a bit more than just a point on the line. Remember, to find the equation of a line, you either need two points on it, or you need a point on it and its gradient. Gradient is slope, to do with angle. But what about the radius here? The radius out from the centre to that point. It meets the tangent at right angles. So if we can establish the gradient of this radius then we know the gradient of this line. So let's do that. Let's calculate the gradient of the radius. 2, 1, minus 4. Now, the gradient of a line joining two points is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So let's call this x2, y2, and this one x1, y1. And we put these numbers in, so we have minus 4, minus, minus 2, all over 1, minus, minus 1, equals minus 4, Minus minus 2 is plus 2, so it's minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2, and 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1, which gives us 2. And so we've got here a gradient of minus 1. The product of the gradients of two lines that are perpendicular, m1 and m2, is equal to minus 1. And we know that one of these two perpendicular lines has a gradient of minus 1. So therefore, the other gradient, let's call it m2, must be equal to 1. So now, for this tangent, we know that we've got a gradient of 1, and we know it goes through this point, 1 minus 4. So now, the problem has reduced itself to finding the equation of a straight line goes through the point 1 minus 4 and has a gradient that's equal to 1. And the standard way of doing that is to use the formula y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to m, the gradient. So we've got y minus minus 4 for y1 over x minus 1 that's the value of x1, equals the gradient, which is 1. Now, the y minus minus 4 is y plus 4, equals, and we multiply up by this x minus 1, and 1 times x minus 1 is just x minus 1. Let's tidy this up by taking 4 away from each side. y is equal to x minus 5. And there's the equation of the tangent. So let's just check back what we did. First, we established what the centre of the circle was. And then making use of the point that we'd got on the circle, we found the gradient of the radius out from the centre to the point. Because the radius and the tangent are at right angles to each other, we know that two perpendicular lines, when we multiply their gradients together, gives us minus 1. So from knowing the gradient of the radius, we can find the gradient of the tangent. And then, 
we've got a point on a line and we've got its gradient so we can find its equation. Quite a number of steps there to go through. So let's have a look at a second example. And this time we're going to take the circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. And we're going to take the point on the circle 0, 2. Well, first, let's look at this and see if we can get the center. Now, comparing it with the standard circle, the x term is 2gx. And that means that g here is equal to minus 2. And the f term, the y term, that's got the f in it, 2fy, well, that means that f must be equal to 1. So straight away, the center of our circle is minus g minus f, so that's 2 minus 1. So we know where the center is. So let's have a picture. Here's our circle. Its center is there, and we know that this point is 2 minus 1. Now, if I draw in the axes roughly where they are, they're about there, then this here is the point that we're interested in, the point naught 2. And so there, if I draw it in, is our tangent. And that's the radius there. And tangent and radius are perpendicular. So our first step is to work out the gradient of the radius. And that, remember, is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 equals, so let's choose one of these to be x2, y2, and the other one to be x1, y1. Doesn't matter which way round we do it. So, this is 2 minus, and y2 is minus 1. So it's 2 minus minus 1 over, and x1 is 0, and x2 is 2. So we've got 2 minus minus 1, that's 2 plus 1 is 3, over minus 2. So we've got a gradient of minus 3 over 2. And we'll call that M1. And we know that for two lines that are perpendicular with gradients M1 and M2, if we multiply them together, we get minus 1. We've just established that one of these is minus 3 over 2. And so if we multiply up by 2 and divide by the minus 3, m2 comes out to be 2 thirds. So we know now that the gradient of this tangent is 2 thirds. So we want the equation of a straight line which goes through this point 0, 2 with this gradient. So, our point is 0, 2, and our gradient is 2 thirds. Straight line that fits that bill, y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to the gradient, which is 2 thirds. So, we have y minus 2 over x minus 0 equals two-thirds. I'll multiply up by the three. Three y minus two, and the three multiplies all of the y minus two, equals, now x minus zero is just x, so I multiply up and I get two x. Multiplying out the bracket, three y minus six equals two x, so three y adds six to each side is two x plus 6. Now, we could leave it like that. It might be helpful, perhaps, to divide throughout by the 3 to get 
2 thirds of x plus 2. Notice dividing throughout, have to divide every term by 3. The reason for putting it like this is this is in the form y equals mx, the gradient of the line, 2 thirds, plus c, the intercept on the y-axis, which as it happens is 2.